41 rookie drivers for the 2017 Hark Pro Series lined up to start the race is Alexander Rowe in the 36 on pole with the zero not Matt McIntyre. It's not. No. No, it's it's Hankins, the Hawaiian, on the outside pole row into the race lead off of turn number two. Still holding the inside, trying to hold off the 10 of Jake Baskinger. Indeed. Baskinger, this is Baskinger's first uh, start, of course. Baskinger is taking over the 10 car for uh, uh, from Gavin Moore. Gavin Moore is off to do, uh, off to other ventures. And, um... Well, it's uh, really great to see the, these rookies uh, putting on a show. Uh, but since uh, there is one technically non-rookie in the field, that being uh, uh, Mifune Sandro, uh, this is called the Newcomers Race. Just double speak, you know? Yep. So now it's Jake Baskinger alongside the 36. He will take the race lead on this lap number four, I think. That's Scott Roush, the only Alabama native, into yeah. third position in the 696 car that I can only describe as being fairly hideous. Yeah, that car is ugly, yes. Is Blake Camphausen in car 441. Camphausen has a lot of stock car experience, but hasn't raced in uh, a couple of years. But he's back with his own team. And, uh, well, he, he told us before the race that he is ready and he expects to roll about 10 times this season. But, well, let's see what he can do. He's had a lot of success in past ventures, uh, mostly on this on uh, the larger speedways. Caitlin Sang and AJ Green racing hard for around 32nd position. That's the 26 of PJ Williams up high. Caitlin Sang coming up the track just a little bit. Big stack up there, a few cars. Got into the wall, AJ Green down to the inside, back up into Sandro, and Williams hard into the wall as well. And um, all three cars will drive away. No caution for this somehow. Uh, I guess the officials were busy getting another Bud Light at the concession stand, but no caution. Uh, unfortunately, this is the end of the night for PJ Williams. His car is terminally damaged. Uh, I guess he broke something. But, um... Yeah, he, well, here comes the cavalry right behind him. Uh, so, yeah, this should have been a caution, but alas, it wasn't. 35 of Taylor Price so far having a good, a fairly good run in the uh, number 35, uh, racing for his own Taylor-built racing group. The 72 of Michael Harvey trying to get up his inside there slides up the racetrack a little bit in the Darrell Waltrip Mobile coming out of turn two. The 35 still there, and Michael Harvey with no spatial awareness spins his car that's Nozomi in the 20 into the side of him uh, Casey Lester also got a piece that'll be the first yellow of the race leading them to the restart uh, around lap 15 of 75 is Jake Baskinger and that's car 696 Scott Roush uh, running in second Roush is of course from uh, he is from Alabama doesn't live very far from, from here and by the way if you recognize his last name uh there's a good reason behind that scott roush is related to jack roush the famous nascar owner he is uh, i'm not sure how it's some something it's like they're cousins something along that line but well he's sure doing his cousin or whatever the hell he is uh sure making him proud running in second here in montgomery Caden Van Avenhoven finds himself right in the middle of the Hornets' nest just after the restart. That's the 43 way up the track into the wall. 72 put around 81 down into the inside wall. Somehow saves it from coming back out in front of many cars there. Uh, and he will continue on. He might have to pit that car um, during the caution flag, but that'll be the second caution of the race. Racing back to the caution, this is on board Colin McGovern in the 42. It's been a while since we've seen this 42 car uh, in the Hart field, uh, formerly driven by Paul Atanos. As, uh, oh, what's this? Oh, we got turned around under caution. I think that was, uh, I think that was Jack Legacy, but no harm, no foul, and McGovern keeps going. Pace car heading back in as we're almost one third of the way 
through this race. Two cautions so far. Let's see if we can get a few green flag laps in. Baskinger takes the restart, but Roush going for the lead on the bottom of the track, and he will get it off of turn number two. Christian Hartono trying to follow him through in the number 24. Yeah, Baskinger runs wide in turns three and four. Way up high out of four. In fact, Roush into the race lead. This is Matthew Engelram in the 47. Uh, Engelram is a native of Texas, and he's known uh, locally uh, back home in Texas for his very aggressive driving style. Um, he said he's not very good on dirt, which is an issue because uh, this series does have a Texas visit this season, but it'll be at a dirt track, Devil's Bowl to be exact. Some rough racing, a few positions up as the 18 of Legacy goes into the wall. They're trying to get past the zero of Kiloa Hankins. Now Engelram trying to make up a few spots here in the Menards machine. Menards, Menards, Menards. Lethanen in the 666 car up into ninth position in front of Kamphausen. Kamphausen pushed out three wide by McGovern and Bonnell. Bonnell sliding up the track and the 42 and 441 go into the wall. Come on guys, look out. Oh god, why? There we go, let's stack up the whole field and ruin everyone's day about a third of the way in. This is on board John Christchurch. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh, Chris Church will be running this race and this race only in the 900. Oh, contact between uh, Flintstone and Durbin, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, Chris Church is a journeyman from uh, Northwest Territories. He will be running the international races in the 404 car for Wes Jones, as Jones will have other commitments. Uh, but he will be in this race only in the 900. As we see the crash right in front of him, yeah, that's no brakes whatsoever. <sighs> Roush is bringing them back to the green flag once again. Baskinger with a very poor restart in the number 10. Hartono still holding on strong in the third position. And that's Demax in the 90 up to fourth place from 27th spot uh, starting position. And it's going to be Roush leading him back to the caution flag. Caution already out here. Hartono going for Baskinger. Not going to get him at the line, though. This is John Arndt in uh, the 05, the Texas native, as uh, he makes a dive bomb on the restart after a stack up, and that doesn't work at all. There we go. Let's stack up the whole field once again. That's the 13 of Lester. That's Denzel Williams in the 17. Camphausen in the 441. Tony Tavolaris, the 69. Mike Durbin, 86. What a mess. The field takes the restart on lap number 40. Caitlin Sang in the 07 blew up under caution. Uh, she is out of the race. Tony Green, Mike Durbin, and Casey Lester fell out of uh, the race in that caution. And forgot to mention that in the earlier caution, uh, Chris Church and Mitchell Carter in the 80, also out of the race. So a very crummy rookie race for those guys. Hartonos just slipped into second uh, past Baskinger, and that's the 90 of uh, Demax now up into second, but Roush is gone in the 696, pulling away by at least 10 to 15 car lengths in the opening laps after the restart. Vas Cortez out of Mexico, one of the two homosexual drivers in the field, is up into third position in his first ever start. Well, I guess it's the first ever start for pretty much everyone in the field, but nonetheless, impressive drive. That's Jokey Lethanen in the 666. I believe we mentioned him earlier on, but uh, as he was cracking the top 10 then, now he's up into a podium spot going by Cortez as Cortez runs wide. This is car 404. That is West Jones out of New Jersey uh, taking over uh, the second CA Motorsports car. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we will not be seeing Gerald Reddington anytime soon. Reddington was involved in a, uh, I believe it was a jet ski racing accident during the off season, and he was advised that he should probably retire. Uh, due to the severity of his injuries. Uh, we may see him uh, in the booth later this season, 
but not uh, on the track anymore. Jones is a, a modified racer, and he's doing a pretty good job running in the top 10. Denzel Williams in the 17 is going for an overtake on the 72, 72 of Michael Harvey. Harvey doing surprisingly well despite that uh, really mangled back. And 17 slides up right in front of the 72, now moves down into the 85. Williams not showing much spatial awareness as Carter, Justin Carter in the 85, goes on through. I'm sure he's glad to be by the 17 considering how Williams has been driving. And that's the 43 of Max Anderson also alongside the 72, the 17 rather, as the 53 of Bunnell slams the wall. This is Henry Williams in the 8HW uh, going three wide there. Uh, if and Isandro in the six really forcing, uh, really pressing his luck. Uh, but it looks like it's going to pay off for Sandro. I'm not sure if I would do that. During practice, uh, the 8HW got into a rather silly incident where he uh, swept up in uh, front of someone, I don't recall who. Uh, it was all the fault of uh, Williams, no spatial awareness on his part. But uh, yeah, I, I think if I was uh, Sandro, I'd get far away from the 8HW. Uh, that is the F1 car, that is Grandad... Uh, Fred Flintstone, uh, I'm not even sure where he's from, and he's like 80 million years old. So I swear he's got to be older than Michael Caine. Um, but uh, he's somehow doing well. Jokey Lethinen is currently posting the fastest laps on the track and is now up into second place. Scott Roush is more than a second and a half ahead, however. Jokey Lethinen's really going to have to keep on pressing forward if he's going to have a shot at going for his Scott Roush Motorsports teammate. Fortunately, the day is over for Kyle Collins out of Newfoundland and Labrador. Oh, it's sideswiped by the 01. Uh, Rear-ended by the 35, but the rest of the field gets around him, it seems. Um, he's going to come to a stop on the front chute, and uh, that's going to be a caution. Uh, the team said that he suffered an ignition failure, but uh, whatever the case, he is done. Roush gets the restart with just 11 laps to go, but Van Avenhoven in the 81 who got overtaken by Roush just before uh, we took the caution is holding up everyone else by a lot. Roush is absolutely gone as we head into turn number three. And that's Estevaz Cortez heading into second, but he might end up back in third in just a second because Lefinen's coming up the inside with a full head of steam into turn one. Eugene DeMax still in fourth in the number 90 with Baskinger holding strong in the top five. Finavenhoven has since adopted an outside line. Um, Sean, we got trouble in turns three and four. There are two cars upside down. Blake Hamphausen running midfield in the 441. That car's uh, taken a lot of abuse. Gets together with Tavolaris there. And right in front of Bunnell, Bunnell scoops him onto his roof. And Casey Lester, I was wrong about Lester uh, going out, but now he's done. And we've got another car upside down as uh, the 441 rolls to uh, a stop and back onto its wheels on the entrance of turn three. The uh, other car upside down was A.J. Green in the 55, as uh, Green gets scooped over by Mark Hankins. Lester piles into the 55. Art, I think, is involved, as is the 44 car of Jim Gambit. Go on board John Bunnell in uh, the car 53. Uh, that's Nozomi on the inside, and what the heck is that sponsor? as uh, he just has nowhere to go and flips over the 441, gets a nice view of uh, the sponsors on that car. Uh, the Bay Shore Plumbing, I think that is. And, well, yeah, that's uh, quite a bit of damage to Pennell. We'll have to see if he retires the car. Last shot of the crash from our helicopter camera as the field races down the back straightaway, and yeah, just two cars upside down, because why not? Three laps to go for Roush to hold off Lethinen and Demax. Demax going for second off of Lethinen as Lethinen's pushed up wide. Cortez is there in fourth as well with Baskinger still in the mix. 
Roush trying to pull away, but he ha isn't doing it as much as he did on the previous restarts. Demax is still right there, hanging with the 696 into turn one. Less than two laps to go now. Baskinger up into third. Engel Ram into fourth. As as that's uh, Lethanen into the wall in the 666 car. Looks like he's not going to get a podium spot as he initially expected to. But white flag is out for Roush. Demax still holding on in second, but falling off a few car lengths, running slightly wide in the 90 car. Engelram slaps the wall, everyone giving it all they got, heading into turn three. That's Baskinger going for second, and off the final corner, it's going to be Roush winning his home race in Alabama. As we take a look at some of the last lap battles, three wide ahead of... Uh... West Jones as Jones makes an opportunistic move on Legacy. Al Legacy really doesn't want to lose any more positions though. And across the line, I'm not even sure who got that. We're gonna have to check back on uh, who got that position there. Uh, check back on that in a little bit as, uh, well then. Uh, already. I'm not sure what uh, one stone did to the 18, but okay. So Scott Roush, of course, is the winner. Jake Baskinger comes home second. Uh, Eugene Damax uh, in third. Matthew and Gilram in fourth. Taylor Price fifth. Jokey Lethen and threw it all away. I guess you could say he joked it all away, but he uh, still comes home sixth. Jeez, he starts six. He finishes six in the triple six. <laughs> uh, Alexander Rowe, seventh, he was the pole sitter. Estebas Cortez is eighth. Uh, ninth place, Al Legacy. And uh, he just barely edged West Jones for the ninth place, but Jones still gets tenth. 